What's up guys, it's your boy Red Chaos One, the Pope of YouTube himself, returns to bring you some more fun web fiction content. First, I must thank HidoF for requesting this, and as usual, I must ask you to leave a request for what you want to see me do in future, and maybe a like and a subscription in order to soothe my fragile small ego. But before we continue with this topic, you must understand that the topics of Western and Eastern fantasy that I'm going to talk about, they're too broad. I couldn't properly convey them. Making what I say in this video br brushing strokes. So before I start going into my personal opinion on the topic of Western fantasy versus Eastern fantasy, I think it's best to talk about fantasy itself in the general sense or in the two types. Basically just laying down a foundation. So elements of the supernatural and the fantastic have been in literature from its earliest beginning. I'm talking about works in the past like the Iliad, Beowulf, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the Arthurian Cycles, and even stuff like the Epic of, like the Epic of Gilgamesh. And those ancient tomes have their DNA in modern fantasy. You can see it especially when it comes to the Arthurian stuff. Most of the knights and legend stuff that we like talking about in fantasy mainly draws itself from here. Now, in order for me to properly talk about this video without it being multiple hours long, I've decided to cover fantasy uh, post 20th century, so modern fantasy as we know it. I will, I plan to do a, few, a, a video in future about pre-token fantasy, but first let me just cover post, I mean token and post token fantasy. So yeah, now this leads us to some of the greatest founding pillars of modern, of modern, of modern Western fantasy. Such figures that I shall mention are J.R.R. Tolkien, the writer of The Lord of the Rings, you know him, and C.S. Lewis, the writer of The Chronicles of Narnia, who were inspired by George McDowell, the Scottish author of such novels as The Princess and the Goblin and Fantasti, which was which were published in around the 1800s or 1858. So, yeah. George McDowell, I recommend you check out his books. These are some of the oldest pre-token fantasy and they give you a good view of how fantasy has evolved and I will cover this era of fantasy one day. So, other important figures of early modern Western fantasy include Robert E. Howard, the author of Conan the Barbarian, Fritz Lieber, author of Fihard and the Grey Mouser, and Ursula K. Le, Le Guin, the author of Earthsea. Another good book, doesn't get enough love, you should check it out. These people are what I consider to be the foundation of Western fantasy or, you know, epic high fantasy stuff. Now, Eastern fantasy, unlike its Western counterpart, is more, how can I put it, more uh, diverse. This isn't to say that Western fantasy isn't diverse, it's just that Eastern fantasy has more genres that are a huge part of it when you mention the word fantasy because in the west when you think about fantasy it's the same medieval stuff i'll talk about that now the genre that dominates the east are genres like wuxia which was spearheaded by writers such as liang yusheng and lois cha otherwise known as Jinyon in the 60s to the to the 1980s period. Xianxia, 
whose modern popularity was sparked by work by the legend of the swordsman of the mountains of Su, which is a 1932 novel written by Huazulu. Oh, oh, God, forgive me. I can't spell this name for the life of me. Yeah, and other things like lit RPGs and isekais, which are much younger genres which have overtaken their older counterparts as can be seen in web fiction sites where isekais and lit rpgs are the leading dominant eastern fantasy stories which are some of the most famous non shonen eastern fantasy stories i can say non shonen which like i said general broad strokes if you ask other people they could have different opinions that isekais aren't the most predominant but if you ask me i think they are the most predominant leading eastern fantasy so now that i've given a decent explanation of to eastern and western fantasy we can get into them versus each other so let me get into the first category and this is from the number of eastern fantasies that i have read versus the number of western fantasies that i have read so remember this is subjective a subjective opinion i haven't read everything so the first thing is world building it's like one of the most important tenets of fantasy and this one is very close between the two of them cuz cuz i know a lot of people talk about world building in western fantasy but it isn't as if Eastern fantasy doesn't do the same. When you're reading wuxia stories, the world and the magic systems are well thought out and they're well <coughs> sorry, and they're well looked into by their authors in order to implement them. Same thing with western fantasy. Now, where I am going to deduct some of these points is that eastern I'm going to give this one to western fantasy but it was just a small margin cuz I th- I think a lot of western fantasy books put more thought into their world building and this isn't to say that eastern fantasy don't put thought into their world building I'm talking about the big books the the mistborns the malazans the the lord of the rings obviously the songs of ice and fire i've seen more of those in the world building than i've seen in eastern fantasy and one of the biggest problems that eastern fantasy has is when it comes to isekai stories and lit rpg stories they're not bad stories but due to them being the most predominant they're the ones that people will find and a lot of their world building is weak And this isn't to say western fantasy doesn't have those when you go to books that are specifically co- clones of the Lord of the Rings those suffer from the exact same problem. So yeah, western fantasy gets the first one. My next point is philosophy. Now this might seem strange. You might be like red, why are we talking about the philosophy? Well, this one I'm going to have to give to eastern fantasy and that can be a little bit subjective when you talk about the philosophy but eastern fantasy books from what i have seen indulge more in their philosophical ideas than a lot of their western counterparts and of course this isn't completely true that western books do not indulge in philosophy stuff like the lord of the rings the song of ice and fire those go a lot into their philosophical aspects but on average from what i have been able to read remember this is my dumb subjective view i have found that eastern stories on average even the worst of them have more philosophical aspects to them so yeah second point second point in this verses for philosophy I'm going to give this one to Eastern fantasy. So, the third point that I'm going to have to cover 
is action. And again, this one goes to Eastern Fantasy. On average, again, subjective view, what I have read, Eastern Fantasy stories just have way better fight scenes. And like this isn't to say that Western Fantasy books don't have great fight scenes, but the Eastern ones, they have amazing descriptive fight scenes, amazing power systems, and when you're reading, yeah, they have amazing power systems, and a lot of their powerful characters feel powerful. I can say, this is where I get, again, a little bit subjective, Western fantasy books might do better at hard-pitched mal army battles, but yeah, Eastern fantasy books have them beat on one-on-one -on -one battles that just feel epic. Again, my subjective view, I just find Eastern fantasy fights to be much more epic. And in modern days, many of the fantasy books that are coming out, which get inspirations from both sides, have that, the best of both worlds. I'll cover that later, but yeah. Final point, Eastern fantasy books have better action. Now, I need you to remember, oh yeah, before I mention that, yeah, I'm gonna have to give Eastern fantasy two points over Western fantasy, but remember, this isn't to say one is inherently better than the other. This comes down to the author and how good they are. An East, a Western fantasy book won't be better than an Eastern fantasy book just because it's a Western fantasy story. Same thing with an Eastern fantasy story. It won't have better action than a Western fantasy book just because it's an Eastern fantasy book. This is all subjective. But you have to remember these things intersect in a lot of areas and this is just my dumb opinion, and I can't claim to have a full grasp of Western and Eastern fantasy. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, a comment, and a subscription, and to subscribe, I mean, because it really helps the channel. You know, YouTube really pays attention to your channel. If people who are watching it are subscribed, and you can share this video with friends to help grow the channel. And yeah, before you go... Please, please check out my book, Phantom Drig, which is an action high fantasy with elements of Western and Eastern fantasy as inspiration. You'll find a link to it in the description below to the three web fiction platforms that I have posted it on.